Now, of course, people want distraction. Of course we do. Because reality is pretty tough stuff. The news, you know, all that stuff, the so-called Islamic State people. I tried to look for, you know, some bright points with these people. That's a bit of a struggle. You know, at the beginning I was watching them go, oh, come on, you scamps, stop it now. But they don't even take weekends. Somebody needs to tell these people they are seriously interrupting brunch for a lot of people. You look at them and you think, oh my God, this is so bleak. This has got to be peak bleak. I can't, I don't know who I am anymore. I can't stand this. You look at it, I don't, I don't even know which snack to eat with which war. <laughs> you say, look, say what you like about fundamentalist death cults, they go very well with the heavier cheddars. <laughs> but you do think, I don't know if I can take much more of this shit. I don't really watch the news anymore. I just have two old men sitting at the end of my room, staring at each other. On the hour, every hour, one of them shouts at the other one, terrorist, and the other one shouts, pedophile. And then a woman walks in between them and says, rain expected. <laughs> I've got it pretty much covered, I think. No wonder then, that people look, look for other things to watch, you know? Television, all kinds of shit television. Television which was invented in Scotland, of course. I, my Scottish wife, we live in Scotland, reminds me all the time about all the amazing things Scotland has invented. It goes on and on. List of things that you depend on every single day of your life you don't even aware of. Monkeys, steam, paella, lightning, kung fu, pubic hair. The list is endless. And <laughs> golf, that's another one. Golf, you get that at the end of your working life. You've worked for 45, 50 years. That's your reward. You get to hit the tiny ball in the tiny hole four miles away behind a tree using a shoehorn. Well done, you. <laughs> to show everyone how into it you are, you have to wear these sexually repellent clothes. <laughs> so they know just how hard you're avoiding your wife. Well done. <laughs> but they also invented television, which people are very addicted to in terms of distraction. You know. I started watching uh, a lot of television in the last, couple, in the last year or so because I gave up smoking, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. But the thing was, no, that's the thing, that's, that, that, that revealed to me how exposed I was. Because it's a prop, you know, you depend on something, you're putting something in your mouth all the time, and it's a screen against the world and so on. And I suddenly felt incredibly alone and depressed, you know. But it's okay, we can talk about depression now, that's okay. Because of all the lovely celebrities who've come on and talked about their therapies and treatments, they've normalized it, it's fine now. You can talk about it. Although I did notice when they were talking about it, I felt the same way I feel when I listen to my own friends talk about their depression which is, you don't know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> My self-loathing is much worse than yours. <laughs> What's that you say? Face down in a pool of Cocoa Pops all day Wednesday? I wish I had the strength for that. <laughs> and... <laughs> but it's good to be able to talk about it. And then, of course you get depressed. Of course you get depressed. Look, life is hard sometimes. You know, so that's why we don't want to spend time alone. Some of you came here alone and will return home alone. And that's okay, but most people are trying to avoid that because they're afraid of their own thoughts. Have you ever had a bath? <laughs> that goes on a bit too long, doesn't it? <laughs> By the end of that, you're thinking, get me out of here! That's enough, get me out! I'm alone and I'm wet, I have to dry myself. I hate this bit. It's so tedious. Why do I have to manage all this pork? Are they... Well, I don't even remember what I was talking about now. I just suppose, suppose it doesn't really matter. We're just talking. Um, oh, distraction, that's it. And the, I don't know where I reminder came from, but the, um, but that's, I mean, that's something that people do. You drink, drugs, food, shit television, amazingly shit television. The things people watch in this country, everybody goes on about how Britain makes the best, best television in the world. It does, but David Attenborough's not responsible for everything. So there's, <laughs> Some extraordinary crap out there. The thing, the, the, the baking thing. People are baking and they're talking about it. Baking, bake, bake up. <laughs> that thing, cake is a beautiful thing. Why fuck it up by talking about it? The, <laughs> the whole point of cake is to shut people up. <laughs> You've got a cake, it's, 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 it's a semi-religious moment. You don't ruin it by standing there and going, I did cream and sugar and ja Shut up and eat it! <laughs> What's the other one that, 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 that you must dance? 
Dance with the old man. Get in and dance with the corpse. That one. Who, what genius came up with this? And people are watching this. What's wrong with them? I mean, look at the austerity, the cutbacks, the schools, the funding for hospitals and all that stuff. If you want to cut stuff back, shut that shit down. If you absolutely have to watch something that stupid, wait. If you have to see something, if you need to zone out of your own life so badly, save the money. Just draw some smiley faces on cocktail sausages, cram them into Christmas decorations and rattle them on a tray. <laughs> People will watch anything. I travel around in these hotels, turning on the telly, looking for local news, and Jeremy Kyle comes on. Who's watching this horrible man? Somebody, he's like a drunk seagull. <laughs> battering pregnant voles with his beak. You did, didn't you? You fucked him, didn't you? You did. <laughs> he should be strapped to the front of a fast car and driven into a big hole, but... <laughs> The, 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 wait, no, stop with the, hang on, just, no, sorry, wait. The whole clapping thing is great for you. I know you're there, okay? I know. <laughs> if you, you're annoying me now. Just, if you're enjoying us, just give each other a hug, okay? I don't... Because <laughs> I, I talk quickly. I forget, if you clap, I'll forget stuff. <laughs> okay, and the laughing also, we could, you take that down a bit. The, <laughs> people will watch anything. Twilight. Pale teenagers sucking the lifeblood out of everybody around them. Where is the escapism in this? <laughs> Anything. Game of Thrones, which has been running for 35 years by my calculation. I can't look at that. I can't watch the little hunchbacked man put on the amulets and the thongs and the swords and the helmets and the pelmets and the cloak and the daggers and the necklace of dead crows arseholes just to crawl up the hill and go, the boats are coming. Oh, please, do something with your life. <laughs> people, people engage with this stuff because it's easier than talking to the people they live with. You know, it's not so intense. If you were House of Cards or whatever, Francis Underwood isn't going to turn around to you and go, why did you eat all the ham in the fridge, you fat fuck? <laughs> The, uh, the thing is, you know, this, the crises come and go, and you blame this person or that group of people, but the ultimate crisis is never changes. It's always the same, you know? And that's that we're all gonna die. <laughs> we're all gonna die, all of us. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's a spoiler, but we are. We're all gonna die. <laughs> and people hate it when you say it out loud. Most of the time they hate it, especially if you're having sex. If you're afflicted with that condition that makes you go, we're all gonna die every time you come, it's very hard to get the mood back. <laughs> but we are, and we're all, you know, there's no point blaming everybody else because we're all ultimately alone as well. Here we are, hot fleas in the gulping dark. <laughs> we are alone because people don't really have religion anymore, you know? You don't really have religion in this country anyway. I mean, you know, the, the Christian religion doesn't really exist in a big way here. You never really had it, to be honest. We had it in Ireland, that was religion. What you had was a dressing up box with some cardigans with holes in the elbows. <laughs> Everybody would meet up and have some ginger nuts and sing a few tunes and go home. We had religion, the thing that makes you feel bad from the moment you're awake. <laughs> with God squatting on the end of your bed with his fist pressed between your eyes going, wake up, shitbag, that's religion. <laughs> Now, that was a very confusing time for a lot of people. I grew up in the 70s in Ireland. It was intense, the religiosity of the whole country, you know, and it was confusing if you were young. I remember saying to my granny, Granny, how many priests do you have to blow to get into heaven? And of course, <laughs> she was an older person. She didn't want to talk about these things. She would go, oh, stop it now, eat your tea. But I was persistent. Come on, granny, how many? And she'd go, oh. I hate putting a number on these things. About 40. Now, come on, eat. <laughs> but that's not really around so much anymore. Religion. People are very pleased that religion doesn't exist for them. And secular people are delighted. They're thrilled with themselves, their material view of everything, congratulating themselves in the queue outside the apple shop, which lights up the street the way churches used to filing in there, feeling ashamed, shuffling in because they have the old phone. They go in there to be told how they're going to be liberated by the high priests who are all dressed in black with their piercings and ponytails who explain how the new pocket altar will release them from their 
earthly burdens. <laughs> now with Fox Pinker in Humptown, you can upwind monkey fuck on Trickleback. Oh, great! <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing there for a while. You've completely set me free. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's the new religion. My son comes in, he's completely excited. You know, he's 12 and everything. That whole generation is excited about all this technology, but he's kind of ambiguous about it as well. He knows it's, it's not real fun a lot of the time, but he goes, oh, look, you've got to see this game or this app. It's really interesting. I grab it off him. I say, get out of here. Go and play. Go and fall out of a tree. Have a fight. Don't phone me until you've been arrested. Obviously, on a landline from some station. Um, <laughs> come on, this is just going to waste your time. Three hours later, it's me stood there going, ha, 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 on candy flaps or whatever the thing is. <laughs> I looked up recently, it was one in the morning. I thought, what am I doing with my life? Species are being wiped out. Glaciers are melting. Somewhere, somebody's eating a Swiss roll and I'm doing this. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> you know, life is so brief. Here we are, there are four ages of human being. Child, failure, old, and dead. That's it. <laughs> That's all you have. You have, to, you have to be here and enjoy it. So I said, what am I doing? And then I realized I had to get to level 19 or it would all be meaningless. <laughs> you know, you watch these things for years. So that's what I was doing when I wasn't smoking. I was watching television. I did some of these drawings as well. I just, because you can't, you have to do something with your hands, you know, and you can't masturbate all day long. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's easier if you're a woman or something, you just hook yourself up to a clock radio or something and <laughs> wait till it goes ding and you're done. If you're a guy, it's complicated. You have to get tarpaulin and ropes and secure the perimeter. I don't want to get involved in all that shit. So, <laughs> the, I still, but mainly what I was doing was I started, I was watching a lot of television, a lot of television. And I realized, you know, that you watch, the, you sort of absorb voices from around the world anyway. You know, that's why the people who are trying to keep people out of countries are really not going to uh, succeed long term. Because not only is everybody everywhere, you're globalized. They're in your head, all these voices, little cartoon representations of all the cultures in the world. I realized this because I did one of these drawings one day and I thought I was quite pleased with one of them. And I found out I have an African-American man inside me. I didn't know this, but I do. Because I did one of the drawings, and before I knew this or thought it, I heard myself say, that pretty. Now, I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> but the point is, you're in there. All the people are in there. You have a crew in there. When I was eating in the house, I was eating all the time. All the time. And I knew this. It was sort of building up. I began eating on a sort of pretty much semi-professional basis. I would wake up. <laughs> It was, like, it was like I was being sponsored by rival teams of scientists trying to see was it possible to eat with your left and right hands all day and night. And it is. It's a question of focus. You have to commit. <laughs> I was walking around putting things in my mouth because it's comforting. I mean, babies know this. They come out, they look around, they see it's a stressful world. They go, ah, yeah, yeah, and they go to the breast and they stay there. They don't take calls or meetings or anything. They just go, I don't want to hear about it. Nom, 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 nom. This is all I don't like, nom, 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 nom. I understand this, the rest of it, I'm not so sure. We should have a giant tit on the wall of every office in the country. <laughs> if you get stressed out, you can just zip your desk over there, your whole chair and desk, and go, I hate Peter, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> the fucking printer's out of ink again, for fuck's sake, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> it calms you down. Putting things in your mouth calms you down. Most of the great times in your life were about putting things in your mouth. A lot of the time, you know, it goes through all your life, not just food, but drinks and alcoholic drinks and cigarettes and body parts of people you admire, sometimes all at the same time. <laughs> Some mashed potato, a vodka martini, a, hey, you busy? You know. <laughs> it's calming. And of course, I started getting fat. And that's what happens. You know, I started creeping up on myself from behind and around. <laughs> getting cuddly in all the wrong places. Nobody wants cuddly eyes. Nobody. <laughs> and I was deluding myself as well, because I was telling myself it's culture. It's just part of culture, you know? You can pretend it's cultural by having lots of cheese and wine and asking where everything is from. <laughs> Great big pile of stinking cheese there. Oh, and where is the cheese from? <laughs> Who cares where it's from? It's here now. People are fleeing the building. <laughs> Windows are melting. Eat the shit before it kills us all, will you? No, I have to know where it's from. Oh, the Catalan cave cows. Oh, I love them. <laughs> They're so musical. Thank you so much. <laughs> Eating all the time. 
walking around eating. I had a drone of self-disgust watching me at all times <laughs> as I was annihilating any possible moments of thought by eating all the time. Look at him, look at him. He's buttering something as he's still chewing the other thing. <laughs> How disgusting can I get? I'm preparing for the next oral event, even though I'm still in one. Oh, God, I'm disgusting. Look at me. I make sex noises from the strain of buttering the toast. I am vile. Quick, your wife is coming. Hide, take the hummus. And a... So disgusting to yourself, it's terrible. This is how religion must have started. In early cave time, somebody had a tiramisu all to themselves. They finished it and they hung around going, oh God, it's so disgusting. And somebody came around the corner and said, God thinks so too. <laughs> oh really, can I meet him? No, I'll tell you what he thinks, just give me money. That's how it began. <laughs> so, all the time, all the time, all the time. And, uh, you know, because it, the mouth is just, it's good to put things in there. You know, the ear, you can kill half an hour putting things in your ear. Tops, really. If you use every available orifice and you're with a friend, maybe two hours. Tops. <laughs> but once one of you has the dodecahedron up there and the other one has the triangle, it's time to hit town and get lunch, you know, so. <laughs> but I was deluded. I was deluded by my own snobbery. Because I kept telling myself, well, I'm getting, I'm, yeah, getting a bit fat. I am. That's the way it is. But I'm still, I'm interesting fat. I'm European fat. This is interesting existential detective delicatessen fat. <laughs> Somebody wandering around moodily chewing on a piece of prosciutto as they wander down to the docks to see if the donut boats are in. <laughs> it's not like I'm American fat. I'm not one of those guys, one of those huge people. They wouldn't even know if they had a monkey hanging from their cock. <laughs> Too busy blodging around going, is there any more? <laughs> Hey, more cheese, I just want to eat it until I can feel my heart beating in my face. And... <laughs> but you know, it just comes. It just comes to you anyway. You suddenly get seriously uncool. That's how age functions. Everything is sort of the same. Everything is the same for ages, you know? It's like you're there and you're talking to your friend and you're going, yeah, yeah, anyway, we did this and we did that. And, you know, Madonna is there reassuringly in the background going, like a virgin. And... And then, so we do this, and then you turn around, and suddenly it's Nicki Minaj going, ha, 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 ha! <laughs> it's a totally different kind of poetry, and you just, the world has changed around you. And you are older. Older, because the middle-aged bus arrives. Nobody knows it, nobody wants to get on. It just comes for you. It screeches to a halt right beside you. It's time to get on. You don't want to, everybody gets on resisting, going, not me, I'm too young. I don't want to get interested in architecture. Please, not yet. <laughs> Oh, look, an escutcheon. Ah, it's happening. Help me, somebody. <laughs> and then you're taken away to become a different person. And it's alienating and frightening because you start liking things you don't like. <laughs> Quiet music. Mmm. <laughs> put that, put that boobly boo shit on again. I really like that. <laughs> you never liked it before. Now you're going do da 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 ba 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 da 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 Serial killer music. That's what's happening in a serial killer's head when they're sawing somebody else's off. <laughs> Ripping the spine out, playing Jenga with the vertebrae. <laughs> Vaginating the bladder and making a hat. Let's not get into details. The, <laughs> the things appeal to you that used to disgust you. Why else do people vote conservative? <laughs> That must be what happens. It must be what happens to people. Oh!